student myself vinod panara and today we discuss some topic of transmission of motion and power chapter of bme that is basic mechanical engineering so first topic for today lecture that is comparison between flat belt drive and v belt drive there is a comparison between flat belt and v belt drive so flat belt and v belt that are the type of belt in last lecture we already discussed there are mainly four type of belt in which flat and v belt are one of them so there is a comparison between so first comparison in flat belt drive it is suitable for moderate power transmission when the distance between the shaft is large so when there is a large center distance between shaft then flat belt drive is used to transmit medium power and in v belt drive it is suitable for high power transmission when the distance between shaft is small so when there is a less distance between shaft then v belt drive is used for high power transmission second one there is a chance of slip due to less frictional grip between pulley and belt there is a less frictional grip in flat belt drive and hence it is not positive drive and in v belt drive there is a less chance of slip due to more frictional grip between pulley and belt third comparison in flat belt drive it require large space and in v belt drive due to compactness it require less space compared to flat belt drive then last comparison in flat belt drive high velocity ratio may not be obtained and in v belt drive high velocity ratio may be obtained what do you mean by velocity ratio it is ratio of speed of driving shaft to the speed of driven shaft okay so this is about comparison between flat belt drive and v belt drive now we start comparison between three drive which is used for power transmission first belt drive second chain drive and third gear drive so we have to compare this three drive now first topic that is main element so in belt drive pulley and belt are main element in chain drive sprocket and chain are main element and in gear drive gear 1 and gear 2 that are the main element second topic slip so in belt drive slip may occur in chain drive there is a no slip in gear drive there is a no slip third topic suitability so belt drive is suitable for large center distance chain drive is suitable for moderate center distance and gear drive is suitable for less center distance then fourth topic space required so belt drive require large space chain drive require moderate space and gear drive require less space then next topic that is design so simplest design of belt drive then simple design of chain drive and complicated design of gear drive because in gear drive there are many angle we have to consider during design then next topic life so less life of belt drive moderate life in chain drive and long life in gear drive then lubrication so not required in belt drive so there is a no requirement of lubrication in belt drive then lubrication is required in chain drive and required in gear drive also then installation cost 
so less installation cost in bell drive moderate installation cost in chain drive and more installation cost in gear drive and last use so bell drive is used for low velocity ratio and chain drive is used for moderate velocity ratio and gear drive is used for high velocity ratio so we have to compare bell drive chain drive and gear drive with various point now next one that is bearings so it is a machine element which support moving element known as journal or shaft so bearing is the machine element which support moving shaft and it support again radial and axial load imposed on the shaft then it reduce the frictional resistance of moving element and resulting reduce power loss then there are mainly two type of bearing first sliding contact bearing and second rolling contact bearing so first one that is sliding contact bearing so in this bearing motion between shaft and bearing surface is pure sliding motion so there is a sliding motion between shaft and bearing surface now in sliding contact bearing first one that is radial bearing in this bearing load at perpendicular to the axis of shaft and second one thrust bearing in this bearing load at along the axis of shaft this is two diagram in which first diagram that is for radial bearing in which load at perpendicular to the axis of shaft and second diagram this one this is for thrust bearing in which load at along the axis of shaft so first diagram that is for radial bearing and this diagram that is for thrust bearing now second one that is rolling contact bearing so in this bearing the motion between shaft and bearing surface is pure rolling there is a rolling motion between shaft and bearing surface and it is also called anti friction bearing because in this bearing there is a very less amount of friction now there are mainly two type of rolling contact bearing first one ball bearing in ball bearing there is a two one first radial ball bearing and second thrust ball bearing this is diagram of ball bearing now second one roller bearing in which first uh, radial roller bearing and second tapered roller bearing this is diagram of roller bearing so this is about rolling contact bearing in which there is a pure rolling motion between shaft and bearing surface now we discuss gear train so gear train that is arrangement of more than two gears which are so arranged so that motion and power transmit from driving shaft to the driven shaft the gear wheel are used in a gear train may be spur bevel or helical gear etc the velocity ratio between driving and driven shaft depend on the type of combination of gear wheel arranged in gear train now there are mainly four type of gear train first simple gear train second compound gear train third reverted gear train and fourth epicyclic gear train so gear train means it is combination of more than two gears so that motion and power transmit from one shaft to another shaft now we discuss comparison between individual drive and group drive 
what do you mean by individual drive in individual drive speed of machine that is controlled separately and in group drive only one main motor that is required to control entire mechanism okay now first comparison in individual drive it is suitable for small size workshop and in group drive it is suitable for medium and large size workshop second comparison speed of machine can control separately and in group drive a set of cone pulley give wide range of speed then third comparison individual machine does not affect other machine when failure of any motor and in group drive failure of main motor will stop entire group of machine and last high initial capital investment and in group drive less initial capital investment so this is about comparison between individual and group drive so in this lecture we discuss three comparison first comparison between flat bell drive and v bell drive second comparison between belt drive chain drive and gear drive and third comparison between individual drive and group drive then we discuss then we discuss bearing in bearing there are mainly two type first sliding contact bearing and second rolling contact bearing and at last we discuss gear train in gear train there are mainly four type simple gear train compound gear train riveted gear train and epicyclic gear train so this is about today lecture so thank you for today lecture